I bet you don't know what's inside these boxes. Well, except for if you saw the video thumbnail or read the title. Yeah, it's a Panther order. A while back, Cool Deep, you know, the guy who sells these Panther orders, contacted me with an email. It was pretty short. And it said basically just, hey, do you want a Panther order? And I was like, yeah, sure. And, well, here we are. So yeah, this Panther router is sponsored. I didn't have to pay for it. He sent it to me for free with shipping and everything. But I wouldn't call this sponsoring because with sponsoring there's always some kind of conditions. And the conditions here for are, they don't exist. I asked him what he wants me to do with it and he was just like, hmm, just use it. So I don't have to review it. I don't have to make a video about assembling it. I really only have to use it in whatever way I want and I can do whatever video I want. I just have to use it in a video and yeah, all he wants is the little bit of exposure on my channel and <laughs> that is really cool. And I also could be flexible about when I do it. He told me just do it whenever you have time for it. Very, very cool. As I said, I won't make the assembly into a long story. Alright, I got it all assembled with the accessories all here, but I still need a router that fits inside there. What? Oh, cool! A router! What a coincidence! Before you ask, no, this router is not sponsored. Now, I also didn't plan on making a review or unboxing on this router, but this packaging is cool. <laughs> a manual. That's actually not bad. Now, as I said, I'm not going to review it, but just from looking at all this here and touching it, I can tell that this is a pretty good router, much better than my other one and I don't even want to mention the one in my router table and I also don't want to say that this is a bad router for what I paid for it, it's a pretty good router and it never let me down and will serve me well for a lot longer. But there is one thing about this new router that's kind of worth taking a look at. These collets are huge, I've never seen that on a router before. Unfortunately, it comes with 12 and 8 mm and Coolbeep sent me three half inch router bits. So I had to also order the half inch collet. It wasn't expensive, so everything's fine. Now let's try getting it in there. Uh oh, this little tap. This won't work. Hmm. Well, there's more problem. I have a pin sticking out here, which is supposed to align with the slots in the base, like so. But as these mounts are fully cylindrical, there's no way I can fit this in there. Hmm, if I could just unscrew the pin, that would solve all the problems. But, no, that's not moving. Well, problem solved. I was able to pull this little pin out here by grabbing it with the vise pliers just didn't work, I couldn't get enough pressure and yeah, it just came out. There it is. And now without the pin it still works with the bases, I now just have to line it up visually with the slot so that it clicks into place and then it's also locked in place and it doesn't really need the pin. And if I need to I could always put that pin back in place. I'd probably never put that pin back in place. <clears throat> Still doesn't fit. Hmm. I was told that it would probably be a very tight fit, so I'm trying wedging these mounts open a little bit. Okay, now it fits. Still very tight though. Okay. I also need to make sure that the spindle lock button lines up with the cutout in the dust collection hood. And this looks already pretty good. Alright, got it mounted and the end of the collet just sticks out of the dust collection node, which means that I don't lose any plunge depth by this. 
These collet nuts being so big is almost a problem because they just fit through the dust collection hood without rubbing. And there really is not much space left. Now before even making the first test, I took the time and scribed a center line in the table. And I've also attached this acrylic block to the template holder which acts as the self-centering system. So if I work with this stock thickness, I put it right here, lower the template holder and lock it. And this ensures that any tenon or mortise or whatever other joint I cut into there will be centered in this stock thickness. And to demonstrate it, I just scribe a line, flip the piece over, scribe the line from there. And if they are at the exact same position, then it's centered and it is. And now I will cut my first joint. Cool. And now for the tenon. For the tenon piece I marked it center and I can line that up with the mark on the table. Now making sure it's square and then I can place the little fences. Now I bring that forward a little bit more than the tenon will be long. My first pen rotor joint cut with the 19mm follower didn't work out so well. It has too much play. I thought it was the wrong bearing so I made a new tenon with the 22mm follower. And this one is too tight. It's awfully tight and I can't make it any smaller because I already was at the end of the template with it. So. Then I calculated what follower size I would need and I would need either 20 or 21. So yeah, I have to make one that size. But I noticed I could also make a bigger mortise with this tapered end follower. And now my bigger tenon almost fits in there. And I can make a bigger tenon with this follower. And there should be enough material left for one last try. And now it fits pretty good. Although for this size tenon with this router bit, I need another follower. Then I tried a 3 8 inch bit for which I have the right followers and this tenon is just perfect. And also one with a 10 millimeter bit came out perfect. Now I could go on making more test joints and testing for example the box joint or the dovetail template but that would be kind of just wasting wood for the video and I don't like to do that. So I will save these until I have a project for these, which I also have one in mind. And as I didn't have made any project with the pant router yet, I thought I would make some accessories for it so that I'm prepared for all the projects that I have planned for it. For example, my own followers. I already made the 21mm one, which I talked about earlier, and with it I was able to make the big mortise and tenon joint fit perfectly. I made this with a piece of 6mm steel rod and I just press fitted a scrap piece of polyethylene on the end and then turned it round and to a little conical shape on my lathe. That worked perfectly so I will make more of them. I bought 6mm stainless steel rod for this and cut it to about the size of the original followers. Then resewing some more polyethylene to thickness and drilling the hole for the shaft. A plastic cutting board would work as well for the material. I just used my wood lathe for turning these to shape which worked great, but a metal lathe would be the absolute perfect tool for this. I turned this on a sacrificial shaft, now I can put it on an actual one. And it's still a really tight fit, I don't need any kind of glue there. And there's the follower. And I also turned it a little conical so it has about the same slope as the templates. I wanted it to be 26 millimeters in the middle and have a range of one millimeter. So about 26 
and with the range of one millimeter this should be half a millimeter smaller in the front and half a millimeter bigger in the back which is pretty much what I got here now I'll just make more of them that follow that same slope so the next one would be 25 in the middle 25 and a half on the big end and 24 and a half on the small end and then when they're all finished I would have followers of any size between 26 and six millimeters which would be the shaft now it was quite a bit of work but i think it's really worth it you may now ask why i went through the trouble making all of them without even knowing if i would need every individual size but the thing is now that i have every size i'm fully independent on making templates for instance i already made this butterfly tenon template and i really didn't think about how big to make it i just made it cut the mortise with it then measured the mortise measured the bit size, measured the template size, and with these values I could put that into a very simple formula with which I can calculate the follower size. So I did that and, well, perfect result. First try. Second try. So yeah, having made all of these now will save me all the thinking time in the future. Now Coolweep also included the new template holder system, so let's put this on. Small problem is that it has a little bit of play and thus isn't guided fully parallel, but I can fix that by enlarging these screw holes. And now it can still slide very easily, nice and parallel, just like the other frame. Very nice. This template holder system also has this little piece for centering work pieces, like so. But there's a little problem with this stopper, because when I switch to the other template holder again, it interferes and you have to remove it and then when you switch these again then the centering stop is gone and you would have to recalibrate it but as you get two of these pieces one is supposed for the other side but you really only need one side to get the workpiece centered I put the other one here so it acts kind of like a stop for the stop and so I never have to recalibrate it I just bump it up against there and tighten it and then it's set again I've also noticed that the router bits get fairly hot and it can't be a problem of the bits because they are brand new and super sharp and also the wood of the joints stays cool. But it doesn't get that hot, it gets fairly warm so I can still touch it. But I don't know if it will be a problem so I keep an eye on that. Well this video now kind of turned out a little bit more unorganized than I thought it would be. But it never really was intended to be a structured review or so. Just wanted to give you my first impressions on it and make the first accessories that I think are important for it. And there also won't be a review on it. All I can say is I like it and I will definitely use it on future projects. And if you're interested in one or still don't know what a pen router really is or what it does, I put a few links in the video description where you can check it out. Well, problem solved. I was able to pull this little pin out by grabbing it with the with the vise. Now I could go on making more test joints and testing the box joint and the dovetail template, but that would be just wasting wood for a video and I don't like to do that. So I'm pretty sure that a lot of video makers or every video maker has gone through these situations situations Ugh. situations I'm pretty sure a lot of video makers or every video maker has gone through these situations the turning takes a little bit of time and I also turn it on a sacrificial <clears throat> I turn it on a sacrificial shaft I turn this on a sacrificial shaft I wanted it to be six I wanted to I wanted it to be 26 millimeters in the. I wanted it to be 26 millimeters in diameter in the middle. Yeah, close enough. I wanted it to. I wanted it to be 20. I want. I wanted it to be 26 millimeters in the middle. Cool. And, and so on. It should also. I wanted it to be.